What is this uncommon 90s color called? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Today we have a 1993 Gibson Les Paul Custom Plus in that cool finish from the 90s that no one talks about because they don't know about it. This finish is officially called Dark Wine Burst by Gibson, and you could find it on guitars from roughly 1992 until about 1997. So it had a very short lifespan of about five years, and the hues can vary on these with Les Paul Customs. You can find an almost black border that's rather thick, and you can also find some that are really light, so light in fact that you can't even see the burst, like this custom run 1993 Les Paul standard I had. And then there's this one, the average middle of the row kind of finish where it's got just a very dark red on the outside and then that bursted red interior. The coolest model to find this finish on is the Les Paul Custom Plus. But you can also find it on the All American 2, which is a DC Les Paul Melody Maker type guitar. Haven't reviewed one of those yet. And you can also find them on the SG-1 series. Most of the custom shipped out with gold hardware, but I did see one that got modified to chrome. I've got to say that looks incredibly stellar as well. But the gold's definitely nothing to sneeze at either. But the main reason these things are so conceivably rare is because nobody ever knows what to call these things. They'll get listed as wine red or wine red burst occasionally because dark wine burst just didn't stick with these things. So if you're a collector looking for this particular finish or a player just looking for this hue, it can be hard to find simply because people don't know what to call it. And if they don't know what to call it, it's so hard to search for it. You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword there. So dark wine burst. Put it in your head or save this video to your favorites so you never forget again. So besides the rare finish on this, the 90s is known as the Goodwood era. Honestly, anymore, I've started to despise that term because it's, it's just so cliche. To me, Goodwood era means 1990 through 1995. Some people like to extend it all the way into the 2000s. But it's basically the era of return turning to traditional specs, new Gibson ownership, slowly getting it right, increased quality control, and yes, you get some nice woods on these. But the Custom Plus was just a Les Paul Custom with a flame top on it. There are some monster tops out there. I mean, this thing is pretty weak in comparison to some of the tobacco sunburst ones I've had, but this thing, you know, it's nice and subtle. It's but something to keep in mind if you're in the market for a 90s Les Paul Custom is these are not actually made in the Custom Shop. The Custom Shop opened in 1990. 1993, but customs were not moved permanently into production there until about 2003-2004. So these customs were made alongside the standards of the eras as well as the studios. You can look down upon them for that, but honestly, I don't. So to learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts. Inside the dark wine burst here. These pickups, they're not the original ones. This one to me looks like some sort of 57 classic that's lost its patent applied for decal. And the bridge pickup here is the correct Gibson USA base plate. The neck pickup cavity, not too much going on here. You can see it's a very dark wine red color and you can just barely see your maple top there. And in the bridge pickup cavity, it's hard to see, but there is a little date stamp right there. It either says August or April, maybe 15th, 1993. But your bridge, this is kind of an interesting time in Gibson history. They're still made by Schaller, but this is the made in Germany version. That's kind of like a late 80s, early 90s thing. Then here's the tailpiece on this one that appears to be original. I polished this one up, but you can still see there's like some smudging in the finish. You've got four black speed knobs. These they things stopped aging after the mid 80s, so you don't get that cool vintage flair to them. And you've got a ding right here, and it's not because there was ever a pick guard on here. Something just dinged up against it. But the original pick guard that's been unused and still has the protective coating over it is still inside the case. Personally, I would probably put it on. Despite having a flame top, it's not like a crazy top. And I think this black pick guard really adds to the evil vibe of this guitar. One bonus of drilling it is then you wouldn't see that ding anymore. So spec-wise here, we have a two-piece flamed maple top with a mahogany body that has nine-hole weight relief, as all customs would have in this era. The fretboard is ebony with binding and fret nibs. And onto the headstock, you can see it has a mahogany neck, and the truss rod cover reads Les Paul Custom. And you have that really cool 90s Gibson headstock on it. This is kind of how they look from the late 80s until about mid-90s. The last vintage-looking one before the modern one came out. Next specs, I get 1.69 at the nut and 2.06 by the 12. 
First fret neck depth 0.8 and it beefs up to 0.98 by the 12th. We've got the traditional 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. Pickup reading wise the bridge is 14.02 so that would spec out like a 498T which would be original and the neck pickup 8.3 and the middle just for fun. Wow 5.2. Moving on to the back here, the truth unfolds. So the four pots, they date to 1993, so those are original. But as you can tell, the bridge pickup definitely been replaced. That's not original factory solder work there. But the rest of the back is in pretty good shape. You definitely have some worming marks and scratches. And I actually got a hint of finish checking if you look at it at this angle. You see it right there coming off the toggle switch cavity? It's kind of cool. Hard to see, not always visible, but it is there as an added bone. Moving on to the mahogany neck here, you can see there are some impressions and scratches and things like that on here, so it was definitely used. But honestly, finding dark wine burst is so hard. This one's actually in pretty good shape, all things considered. I would say the worst thing on this guitar is right here. Finish has kind of been chipped away, and, and it looks like the finish is cracked a little bit right there. So, Grover Tuners, you've got your serial number right here and Made in USA stamp. Strap buttons have been replaced with shawlers on both the top and the bottom. This one weighs nine pounds, 8.7 ounces. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs> under black light now. Oh yeah, this one glows. So to continue on the uh, story from the original owner, he said he gigged this a lot and then he put it into storage. So you can definitely see his gigging years here. It's kind of absorbed to the finish his sweat has. And you can also see it right there. He must like to have anchored his hand right there. But he got a little bit of a clear coat wear here. You can't see that in regular lighting situations, but this kind of helps you see those nicks and dings on the neck a little bit better too. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. There's a stand mark right there. Cool. This one still retains an era correct Gibson USA case, likely the original one. Uh, you've got one, two, three, and a fourth back latch. Unfortunately, the original owner forgot the combination at some point in time and took the top locker off. But I went ahead and unlocked it and reset it back to zero, zero, zero. So if you ever do purchase one of those, they just screw right in and you could technically use that lock then. For more info on that, you can take a look at this video. But inside the case, it still has your pink shroud. And it's just the pink interior. Good heel support, double neck rest. I don't like the headstock block, but that's just me. If you really hate them, you can just take a knife, slit it right there, and then this comes out. It's just a piece of foam. I actually had somebody request that I do that on a case before. <laughs> And inside here, uh, you didn't have any COAs at this point in time because it, it was a USA line product, but you do have the original pickguard here, which I would install that if I were you. So now that we know all about this Les Paul Custom, what are my final thoughts on it? The 90s era, they are very good guitars. The way I view them is they're the last kind of vintage looking ones, at least the early 90s ones, that still have modern day specs. So you don't have like maple neck shenanigans or anything. There's proper two piece maple tops, mahogany bodies. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of those freaky specs and multi piece bodies of the 70s. I still love those things. But these are for people who want a slightly older guitar with the correct 50 specs, you know, modern day stuff that they're doing yet today. 
So I can definitely suggest them from that standpoint and do recommend you try one if you see one. This guitar has already been spoken for, but if you're interested in buying anything from me, you can check it out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com, or check out any of my reverb listings. Links to each can be found in the video's description. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.